A Matissimo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the A Matissimo. I just finished a three-day stretch of Black Friday madness at my store. I、uh, gotta say, I. I hate it. I mean, it's pretty good for business, I guess. But oh my god, it just—it's so busy. It's just—it's so busy. We literally do what we usually do in a day on regular days in an hour. That's how busy these days are. So I'm, I'm glad that's over. God, I hate Black Fridays.、Um, I don't even buy anything on Black Friday. I just—I don't want to deal with the stress. But anyway, that is a side note. I'm just happy it's over, and all I gotta do is worry about getting to Christmas and then Boxing Week, and then done. Done with this crazy shopping fever season. Gotta hit it. Anyway, I thought I would do a quick Yuri review、um, because that always calms me down, makes me feel good about myself, and get all the fluffy feels in my heart when I think about a good old Yuri story. So, as promised in my last video, the Frozen 2 review. And if you haven't watched that, please feel free to check that out. I do kind of put on my Yuri goggles and do a little Yuri take on that Frozen franchise because it's so there. Don't even pretend it's not there because it's so there. But、uh, I thought I'd check out this one. This is a new one that just came out inside the month of November. By the time I post this, it'll probably be December. But this came out in November. It's a, a tropical fish yearns for snow, and that kind of makes sense because of, well, you'll find out later why. It's a weird title,、um, but obviously the cover makes it pretty clear that this is a Yuri. It's by a Viz, actually. Surprisingly, I was expecting Seven Seas, but it's actually by Viz, which is interesting.、Um, they don't do a lot of Yuri, but when they do, do I think they did After Hours, I believe. Yes, they did. And After Hours is one of my favorite. Yuri. So generally, when they do pick up Yuri, it's something a little bit different.、Uh, something I usually seem to enjoy. So let's just jump right into it.、Uh, I want to jump into the story, and、uh, as, as usual with Yuri, I do like to read the back of the book to kind of compare and contrast what that actually means in association with the actual story. Did they use just kind of like selling tactics, or is it pretty bang on? I do like to kind of take a look at that. So we have a tropical fish of Yuri's for snow. When her dad gets a job overseas, Kanatsu Amano has to leave the Tokyo life she's always known and relocate to a small seaside town to stay with her aunt. The move also means starting a new school, surrounded by complete strangers, and it's a lot to handle for a go- girl who has trouble for with change. But on her first day in her new town, Kanatsu is instantly drawn to Koyuki, an older go- girl who is the sole member of the aquarium club. Kanatsu's introverted tendencies are hard for her to overcome, but maybe she's found something worth coming out of her shell for. Oh, yeah, a little yuri. But Kanatsu is doing her best to adapt to her new school. But being required to join a club has introduced additional pressures. Her friendly classmates, Kaye,、uh, classmate Kaede, invites her to join the home ec club. But Kanatsu hasn't even had time to consider which club she's interested in. Meanwhile, Koyuki is like a ray of sunshine in Kanatsu's cloudy world. Will Kanatsu join the aquarium club? So obviously, Koyuki, Yuki meaning snow in Japanese, is kind of the reference to snow on the cover, which is kind of a cute. I kind of like that title and the whole aqu- aquarium club thing and the tropical. Of fish yearning for snow. I like the title. It's not like so blatant and obvious. It's kind of the nice plan where it's a little poetic, which is kind of nice. So the story is very slice of lifey. It's very easy to step into. It's not the stakes aren't overly high. We just have this introverted girl who has to move to a quieter seaside town and try to make friends, and she is she has trouble coming out of her shell. And we kind of see that、um, later with her. Interactions with her father, which we'll get into inside development. But yeah, the, the stakes are incredibly high. If you're looking for something pretty fluffy, kind of nice, watching an individual coming of age story、uh, on both ends of the spectrum with、uh, Kanatsu and Koyuki, then you're gonna get that with this、uh, little Yuri number. So yeah, that's that's the story. We're just gonna jump, move into the presentation side of things, and actually go into development with the actual story itself later. So as far as the presentation goes, I don't know if you saw the cover, but Here it is. If you need it again, and the cover, I liked it a lot. It was really pretty. You know, nice colors. The girls look cute enough. All that kind of stuff. If you delve into the actual book itself, it is very above average. I'd say it's like if I had a grading system between one and ten, ten being amazing and one being okay, I'd give like a solid seven, seven point five. It's nothing spectacular. It doesn't have a lot of identity. It's very much just like another. Japanese manga with characters looking very anime-esque, but it is clean. It is polished. The characters are very cute. They're pretty individualistic. There's not a huge cast yet, but they're there. I do like how the world, especially with my Yuri, I really, really appreciate this as far as Yuri is concerned. Whenever the world feels real, and it certainly does feel real. There's not just a bunch of girls doing girly things, falling in love with each other like other Yuri manga that I won't name. No, this feels like a very realized and believable world with lots of girls, with mommies, with daddies. 
daddies, with aunts, uncles, grandmas, little brothers, and male classmates. It's fantastic. And the even better kind of aspect of things is that Koyuki, the older classmate who Konatsu kind of finds herself drawn to, is really popular. And not like super like idol-esque popular, like inside Bloom Into You, but she's just, she's pretty popular. Like she's got this gentle aura about her. She's very kind. She's quite pretty. And a lot of the guys like her, and you see her getting confessed to a couple times where she kind of like, oh no, I'm good kind of thing. And you know, she has this front of like this very mature individual. Now what Kanatsu quickly discovers is that Kuyuki is a bit of an airhead, uh, like not like Dom, but she's she's a little clumsy, she's a little awkward when it comes to social interactions. Like as Kanatsu gets to know her a little bit better, she gets to see a different side of Kuyuki that's not as uh, in, uh, intimidating, which is kind of a cute, uh, expansion of her character makes it a little more interesting adds a little more depth to her character which i like and that is something this one does so yeah we have koyuki who's very cute uh, who is very attractive a little older a little mature looking with a shorter hair and everything the minor details in the characters differences is nice are they like crazy different looking no so i have to dock it a few points there as far as i'm concerned i like when the characters look very distinctly different but they're certainly recognizable and that's that's always a good thing background's very nice inside this not like amazing sauce not like the other one i just reviewed i can't even remember uh Oh man, I can't even remember the name of that one, but I'll, I'll throw it in the text over here for you guys. The one I just reviewed like two, two reviews ago, that one had phenomenal backgrounds. So this one's not quite as good as that, but still really nice kind of setting. It does set the tone really nicely. We get those uh, aquarium kind of shocks of like in the aquarium club we get the kind of quiet seaside town shocks we get a really good idea as to where this is taking place expressions are really well done i don't remember being wowed by anything but i don't remember being disappointed either i did really enjoy reading this one it's really pleasant to look at and the emotions coming across in the characters is really nice of note of course is kano or not of course but kanatsu has this scene whenever she kind of forces herself to smile grin and bear it and i really like that picture for some reason the way she's pushing her mouth up and just trying to make herself look content with her current situation. I think that says a lot and I really like stories that show and don't tell necessarily everything. So yeah, presentation is good. Is it amazing? No, it's just a very average, very above average and very serviceable. So I have to give this one credit for just being a nice looking manga. Just not as noteworthy as the last one I read. The last scary manga I read again. Oh God, I cannot remember. So yeah, keep just keeping at pace, keeping going. Uh, I want to talk about development. And as you saw with the story, there's not, again, the stakes aren't like crazy high as far as this one's concerned. But I do like, like I do like a nice just slice of life yuri coming of age story and this one is executed really nicely because as i said koyuki is getting confessed to kind of left and right kanatsu feels herself being drawn to this young lady and then it's actually koyuki who seems to develop feelings first as is displayed by the very end of the manga where you get this idea that oh like she might be kind of into kanatsu who on kanatsu's side we don't really get that inkling that she might be attracted to Koyuki yet, so I like how this one is taking a sweet time. It feels like just another slice of life that just happens to have two female leagues that will perhaps start falling in love with each other, which I love that. I like it whenever it takes a sweet time. Hana and Hina after school was another one that kind of like the first volume, you, you thought, okay, yeah, they might get together and because it was by Milk Morinaga, you're like, they're probably gonna get together, but it's still like, it was still kind of a will they, won't they kind of idea. And this one even more so, I find it, you know, it, I can believe this world a little bit more than anything Milk Morinaga puts out, except for girlfriends, that was like, one of her masterpieces. But this one I do really like just the world building. I like how it feels very real, I like how it works very much a character exploration of the individuals who, you know, happen to be into each other, but we're getting to learn a lot about them and their situation. Like I said, Kanatsu with her relationship with her father, she has a, a real time, a real hard time being honest with him. Like you see her texting him and then she deletes a bunch of it and just keeps it simple and everything to like not make waves or anything, which I think is kind of an interesting idea. So I'm interested to see kind of where that plot thread goes. I'm interested to see where Koyuki's plot goes because she's like the sole member of the aquarium club initially and then we get kanatsu joining it eventually and it's really really cute and you see the two of them kind of get closer and closer and it's really fun to watch so this one as a yuri uh, as development wise i like how the pace that it's going at i like that the focus on the characters themselves i like the world that we're inside i just like everything that's kind of like producing so i'm really looking forward to volume two i'm certainly going to read it but as for final thoughts for this one I'm gonna say it is one that I like quite a bit. I'm gonna recommend it. If you like Fluffy Yuri, you should absolutely take a look at this one. I think it's executed so well and so nonchalantly and so just normally that it's, it's kind of unique in that way where it's like, yeah, these two are probably gonna fall off just because that's just how it is. They just seem 
legitimately like each other. Or maybe they won't. I don't know. We'll see. So maybe they'll throw a curveball at us. But either way, it just feels like another slice of life manga with two female leads that happen to fall in love with each other, like I said before. And that's something I really want to see in Samai Yuri. I don't want it to be all girls school with all these other girls falling in love with each other. It's just so unbelievably false. Like that's just not a thing in Japan. It doesn't happen all the time. Like here and there, maybe. But I, it's so unbelievable and it really takes me out of this story. Yes, I know there's fantasy, you know, manga and that kind of stuff or whatever, that's fine. But it, as far as socially goes, I'd like it to be as accurately accurate as possible culturally, which is, I, it's not a thing in Japan where a bunch of girls are just in love with each other. They just don't, it's just, in everyday life, it's just not a thing that happens that often. It's not that common. So anyway, that's kind of my like little nitpick there. But overall, yeah, definitely check this one out. Give it a read. Viz manga are not usually overly expensive. So if you feel like supporting the manga industry and in particular, the Yuri industry, then definitely give this one a buy. I know I'm going to add it to my collection, which is fantastic. I always love it whenever we get some good Yuri. I think that's pretty much it. It's going to be a shorter review today. Not a crazy amount to say about this one other than, yeah, it's pretty fun. It's a good one and it's perfectly above average. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the A Matissimo Show, another Yuri manga because a lot's what I like to do and I know my viewers enjoy them as well. If you feel like supporting the channel whatsoever, feel free to join our friends here on Patreon and be uh, join a relationship with all A Matissimo. That's how the kind of the tier system works and it's, it's just a fun little tier system. So thank you very much to these people for helping out the channel. It keeps me motivated, it keeps me inspired to put out videos and keeps me on track, which is always nice. Goodbye. So yeah, I'll see you on the next episode of the Anime Tissimo Show. It's not going to be a Yuri manga that I review next. It's going to be something that's very similar to Teasing Master Takeki-san, which is a new manga that actually was just released by Vertigo something or other. It's a newer kind of manga publisher. So I hope you join me for that. Otherwise, I'll see you later and have a good one until then. Bye-bye, everyone. Farewell.